so let's say, Suzanne, you have a corporate manager. They're, you know, th this is new to them. They don't have a plan. They don't have anything. Mm -hmm. And they're pretty good at their job when everything's going well. But man, oh man, this is something you can't have a playbook for. So you have a couple of minutes with them. And, and you know, one of the managers comes up to you and you're going to go sit down for coffee. And you have a couple of minutes. What would you tell that corporate manager you know, taking all of your experience and trying to distill it into a couple of kind of lessons or, or watch out or anything like that. What, what does that conversation look like? I would say that you're going to get a, a much better sense of comfort. Um, even if you don't have a plan in place and it's your first time coordinating a crisis or you've just started, being aware of the competent, great people that you have around you. And making friends with them before a crisis happens and being able to have trust them and they trust you back. And the best way to do that is to establish those relationships ahead of time and also identify, and it may, it's not just leaders, you know, that some leaders that might not be in the positions that they're in, it could be some team members as well. So also being able to have the courage and identify, and the only way you're going to find that out is to be, interacting with these people. And then perhaps there are some people who are leading areas that shouldn't be either. Some of your team members that are not the right team members. And as you identify that, not to be afraid to be able to remove those people from those positions because those are not the people that'll be able to help guide you through and support you. It's all about teamwork. Um, specifically during a crisis, but anytime really, right? As a leader, you should be, you're managing a team and they should be respecting you and that you should be giving them a reason to respect, uh, they should be respecting you, but you should be respecting them back. And if there's not that level of comfort and, and that you think that really that person would be able to support you during a crisis or when times get tough, then they shouldn't be in those positions. And leaders also need to make, be able to make those tough decisions either before a crisis. Sometimes it happens during a crisis. Sometimes it happens afterwards. Mm -hmm. But hopefully, if you're able to establish those relationships right away when you start, and you become the leader before a crisis happens, you're going to identify who's going to help you during a crisis and who maybe why are they in this role? I just started here. I didn't hire them. Whoever mm -hmm. did maybe didn't know better, or maybe they were a friend of somebody, or whatever it is. We've all seen that as well. So people really need, as leaders, to be able to recognize their own limitations, but also their team members. And if they have the right team members to support them, and if they don't, then I'm not saying necessarily fire these people, but don't put them in the positions that they, you know that they won't be able to manage and support you during times of crisis. Because you're ultimately setting your both of you up for failure. Because mm -hmm. in my experience, that person knows that they're not fitting in or they're not doing what's required. And, and, and you're actually setting them up to fail. And, and going back to that psychological safety, you need to be taking care of your people. And, and part of that is putting them in a position to succeed because they're already hypersensitive to what's going on there.